What's up guys? Hopefully all of you are doing well. In this video, we're going to be making my Southern mixed greens with smoked turkey. This mixture has collards, mustards, and turnip greens, and I even threw in some spinach. This recipe is so easy, but most of all, you have lots of flexibility. So let's get into it. Today's smoked turkey of choice, I'm gonna be using drums. So you can use turkey wings, it doesn't matter. Just any smoked turkey that looks good in the store, go ahead and get that. And I'm just scoring it around so when it starts to boil, that way it'll start to pop and burst open and that helps the meat fall away from the bone. For this video, I decided to use two pots. The red one there is a cast iron enamel and it's a seven quart and my other one I think is about an eight. So I just put one um, smoked turkey drum in each one and poured over about 10 cups of water. Now all we're gonna do is bring those up to a boil. If you want a pot to come up to a boil quickly, you cover it. After I brought the smoked turkey up to a boil over high heat, you see how fast? That only took about 10 or 15 minutes for that full boil to happen. Then I turned the heat down to about medium and I just let it simmer for an hour or so while I cleaned all these greens. Now cleaning greens is about the hardest thing you're gonna do out of the whole recipe. That's the most labor intensive thing to do. So I got two bunches of mustards, three bunches of turnips, and three bunches of collards. And I also have some bag spinach and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes, the bag says pre-washed, but you should still open up that bag and rinse that spinach. I cannot stress that enough. I can't stand to see people pull these greens and lettuces right out the bag and use them. You do need to open them up and make sure they're okay. I'm just taking all of the leaf greens, uh, untie them, put them in a clean sink, wash your sinks out first, all right? And then put your greens in there. And I'm going through each one and rinsing them, checking them for dirt and bugs, sand, what have you. And I am tearing off the thicker part of the stem, which is near the end. That's more fibrous and it can take longer to cook. I am gonna leave some of the stem, but not all the way to the base. Now out of the eight or nine bunches that I cleaned, these were the stems that I pulled off. Now some of you may opt to keep those, chop those up and cook them. That is totally up to you, all right? So do what you need to do, but that's what I decided to take away. Now I'm just gonna take the greens and roll them up and give them a rough chop. Now, just as you thought you were done cleaning, you're not. <laughs> What I'm doing is I'm giving the greens the chop because I'm putting them right back in the sink so that I can give them their nice bath and a little bit of salt water. Salt water is going to help catch anything that you may have missed. Small bugs, gnats, and things like that. Bugs don't like that. So I'm going to um, sprinkle a little salt in the water on the first wash, and you're going to go from sink to sink. I go about three times, depending on how clean or slash dirty the greens were when you picked them. If you get organic greens at the farmer's market, chances are you may have a little more sand because they were picked straight from the source and brought to you and sold, which is great. But you do need to be mindful and clean your greens really good. As you wash the greens and agitate the water, any sand or dirt that may have been on the greens is slowly falling to the bottom. So once you start to take the greens out of the water, try to stay near the top of the water. Whatever's floating, grab that first. You don't want to call up that sand and dirt from the bottom of the sink. So let it fall to the bottom while you get the greens at the top. All right, so I started on the right side of the sink washing the greens. I went over to the left and I ended on the right. All right, so you could decide whether you want to do it, you know, two, three, four times, depending on the type of greens that you get. And I'm stressing that. All right, so then I went back over to the right side of the sink. And then in the left side of the sink, I just poured all of that spinach out into the sink so I could see what was going on. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Gave it a nice wash and then I moved it to a strainer to give it a final wash and, and let it drain before I added it to the pot. All right. Okay, so you've done the hard part. You've washed all your greens, you're ready to go. Now take a clean spoon and taste your stock that you've made. Do not hit that twice, all right? <laughs> unless you got another clean spoon, but taste it. I wanted to see how salty my stock was because I was using a new brand of smoked turkey. Originally, I would put the onions and the garlic in with the smoked turkey and just let it all simmer together in the beginning, but I wanted to see how much salt I was bringing to the game. Now what I'm doing here is I'm removing the tendons from this turkey drumstick, and this is what they tend to have. Once they start to cook apart, the tendons stick straight up so you can grab them out and remove those and then put your meat and your skin back into the pot. Again, this particular issue only comes when you use smoked turkey drumsticks. If you use smoked turkey wings, you won't have the same issue. You could just take the meat off the bone and keep it pushing. Now I'm gonna add my garlic and the meat and my onions back to the stock. 
and I added my seasoning. Now, I went with about three tablespoons of GDS. You guys can check that out at gdseasoning.com along with this recipe. And then, of course, I removed the meat from that bone also. Hopefully up to this point, you discovered you need one good thing to make these greens work, and that's a good stock. If you have good stock, you'll have good greens. You can make them a little salty, a little spicy, a little tangy. You're in full control. I added a little bit of acidity by adding some white wine vinegar. You can use red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and that just helps break the greens down a little more. A little bit of acid can help you a long way. I let them simmer for two and a half to three hours. I was able to combine both pots into the seven quart pot here and they turned out absolutely delicious. Somebody's always hovering, wanting to get their fork in the game. You see that? Thank you guys so much for joining me. You know, I appreciate it when you come cook with me and hang out. Don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com. And I'll see you guys next time.